need more information. I need to I know I need to pray in a different way. God's laying someone on my heart. I mean, you go to him. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Everything's great. Is that is that is that what the religious circle's telling me? God, am I just supposed to release it and say, okay, we stay in a religious circle, or am I supposed to go? Are you sure you're okay? God's been laying you on my heart really heavily lately, and I, I just feel that I'm supposed to be praying for you. Is there anything? And then if God's really serious and he really wants to do it in his life, and if we're really open to him, he may just go, I need you to ask him this. I may need you to say jelly bean to him. And then they're going to break down, and then you, now you can be in agreement together. Yeah, I really do need some help here in this area of my life instead of going, I'm all good. We've all done it. How you doing? I'm good. And inside you're in the dark corner somewhere crying your eyes out because the situation is bad, but I ain't letting you know that. And we've also been on the other end. How many times have we went up this, how you doing? All good. But we see your situation. We know your situation. It ain't all good. How can I pray for you? I uh, just ask God bless me. How do you want him to bless you? You know, I don't know much, but Scripture's pretty clear. Ask specific stuff and let him decide whether you've asked right or wrong and he'll tell you. I need transportation. Well, if I go asking for a blue, purple Lamborghini or a Tesla, God made that. I, I, no, no. I haven't, we, we don't need to be praying out over that person's life because they can't they can't take care of this right now. Let's let, let, maybe maybe we get them a little beater. It's gonna last them three four months, but we get them a little beater so that we can they, they get back and forth to work just to get their self situation scared away. And then in three or four months, I, I'm gonna bless them with something a little more reliable. But I need to be asking God. So sometimes I gotta ask God what He wants me to pray about. What happens in the previous chapter, where the blind guy is is asking and he's mm -hmm. asking loudly and he's mm -hmm. asking very insistently and, and and the crowd is discouraging him. Yeah, why? Exactly. Um, once Jesus turns around and, and says, "Well, call him," then then they're like, "Sure up on your feet." He's got oh, their their discouragement of of someone else is is pretty fickle. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Once they see that, that God's ready to bless you, yeah, uh, they'll change their tune. Yeah. But that discouragement, you know, if you if you if you if you just shut up, yeah, Wouldn't well, uh, imagine if he had just shut up, well, and he'd he still would have gone on his way, and then we would have had the crucifixion, resurrection. He wouldn't have been back that yeah. way. The guy would have died blind. Yeah. So is that is that the story where he threw his cloak down too? Because there's one where he threw his, he threw his yes. cloak down. So that, cloak that, aside, he jumped to his yep. feet. So that's very important because that cloak that he was wearing was basically his sign, I'm blind. So that cloak was telling everybody went went right, uh, this guy's blind, so maybe I'll give him a little bit, maybe I'll give him a little food. So he was still blind when he threw that cloak down until he came to Jesus and Jesus healed him. But that dude had faith first to call out to Jesus and faith that... Jesus hears me. I'm going to get healed. So I'm leaving my past behind me. I'm leaving that situation there. It, it, it's 22. So I'm just going to read the rest of this and, and, and think through it. Study it out. Because verse 24 has everything to do with the money changers and the fig tree. So I'm going to read all the way to verse 26. 23 says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whoever says to this mountain, the fig tree, the debt, the situation in your church, the situation in your, your life. Whoever says to that mountain, be lifted up and thrown in the sea and does not doubt in his heart. Very important. Amplified says, in God's unlimited power, but believes that what he says is going to take place scares a lot of religious people. How dare me be able to say what's going to happen in my life? Power and life and death ain't my tongue because obviously I don't know how to speak. That's what God's saying here. Believes that whatever he said is going to take place, it will be done for him according with the will of God. I know God's will, so what I'm speaking is what he wants because I'm saying what the Father says. It's powerful how Jesus said it. I'm saying what the Father says. I'm doing what I see the Father do. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer in accordance with God's will, believe in confident trust that you have received them and they will be given to you. 
When you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, he goes into that and says, make sure you go to him and say, uh, I got a little bit against you, forgive me. Because then God can't forgive you. And then if you want a big hindrance that's going to keep your prayers from answering, that's going to be one of them. God goes, uh, if you want me not to do what you want, have some unforgiveness in your life and we'll make sure that we put a little, put a little roadblock in that we got to work on. Next week, dig into Matthew 7 is where we're going to go. Dig into stories around it um, because that is exactly how we're going to tackle this prayer theme. We're going to find the prayer theme, the prayer promise, but we're going to find out the context around it. Because in religious circles, if we read that, we could take that out of context and it would scare people that have never seen God do anything in their life. Ask for anything and he'll do it. Or it's going to turn them into a fanatic and it could really mess them up. But when you study the context of it out, it gives you some meat on those bones and you really got to think about it. So see everybody. We're running late. Catch you next week.